Today, I'm going to talk about all the gear you need as a landscape photographer. I mean, all the gear, camera, lens, accessories, clothing, uh, boots, everything that you need to know if you want to practice landscape photography. Hey everyone, my name is Soma Phototom here on YouTube. This channel is all about landscape photography. So if you're interested in this topic, make sure to subscribe. Also, you can support me by buying my landscape photography ebook where I talk about my concept and my philosophy on landscape photography. And you can also buy my uh, editing course on foggy forests. And maybe you can join me for one of my workshops. And all the details are on my website, and the link is in the description of this video. Now, let's get back and talk about all this gear because we have a lot to cover. Okay, first of all, I start with the camera and the lens that you need to buy. So my recommendation is to purchase good quality lens from the start. Invest in good quality lens because eventually you will get there and you'll spend some more if you're buying entry-level lens. Uh, the first lens that I recommend because I'm working with uh, Canon uh, gear, the 24-105mm f4 L lens, image stabilized. I think it's a good all-around lens that you can use and you can uh, it, this is a very good lens uh, for a starting point uh, as a landscape photographer. Now, after you buy this lens, you buy your camera. And I have a full frame Canon EOS R. I think the Canon EOS R is more than enough for a photo camera. Uh, if you don't afford a full frame camera, you just buy a crop sensor. It's not a big problem for a landscape photographer. Um, and this this is a first version of Canon 24 to 105. It's like a lens designed for DSLRs. And I'm using an adapter with this camera. It works perfectly. The focus is really good. I don't have front focus or back focus. Uh, it's, it's working flawlessly. Now, after you buy this lens, the other lens that you will, uh, you will need are these two. I have a 17 to 40 millimeter lens f4 uh, you can also go for the 16 to 35 millimeter uh, also f4 and i also have the 70 to 200 f4 image stabilized and i always recommend if you're going to use it's a photo lens to uh, buy it with image stabilization now this lens is rarely used so um, i think you should uh, you should buy this lens uh, last. Now let's move to filters. The filter that you absolutely need to have is the circular polarizer. And I'm having a polarizer filter on each of my lens. I don't wanna spend time to uh, unscrew filters from one lens to the other. I'm using the Hoya HD slim version. Uh, you can use whatever filter you you want. Make sure to have a version for wide-angle lens, and uh, make sure it costs at least at least a hundred euros. <laughs> if you want to measure the quality, you can measure it uh, like this. You can have cheaper filters that are decently good, uh, especially if they are smaller. But I found out that for a 77 uh, filter. I think 100 euros, it's kind of it's kind of the, the amount that you have to spend for a good filter. For ND filters and ND graded filters, I recommend the Lee holder with uh, the ring adapter designed for wide-angle lens. As an ND filter, I have an, uh, a big stopper from Lee. I also had a little stopper of six stops. This is a 10 stop. So, uh, I have a six stops head had the six stops one which I completely shattered at one of my workshops and for gradiated filters I have these two these two are glass filters from Ken Faith um, this is a three stop ND gradiated soft filter and this one is a, a three stop ND gradiated um, reverse filter you will absolutely need uh, a remote control. I prefer to use something like this because I can set custom timers and I can give myself selfies <laughs> with this remote. You will also need a headlamp. 
I'm using the Phoenix HL60R, which is more than enough for me. And now optional gear. A drone. I'm using the Mavic Pro uh, version 1, more than enough for me. And although this is what I call an optional gear, I think you should absolutely consider one. This is a Garmin watch. It's from the Phoenix series. It's a 5X. Uh, it has the entire world map on it. Old cities, um, over 90% of the trails, and uh, you, you don't need to, to, uh, to download a trail on the mountain to, to have it on this watch. So you know, I'm, I'm just starting the map and the GPS locates me on the trail and I know exactly especially if there is fog you you kind of know what, where you're going and you can use it as as you're using a GPS on the road in your car so it's very useful now all this gear uh, you need to put it on a tripod I'm having this tripod is almost 11 years it's a Manfrotto 055 5 series it's carbon fiber and uh, the legs are three sections one two three so if you are at least 185 centimeters I'm at 190 uh, you will need a 0 uh, 55 if you're under this height you can use the 190 series also carbon fiber but if you are using uh, bigger gear, bigger gear doesn't mean full frame with the 70 to 200, means, means a lot bigger. You will need this one. I recommend investing from the start in a good tripod because you will probably uh, have it for life. Now all this gear needs to be carried in a backpack. I have two backpacks. Now if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, hiking one day and I'm coming back the same day or maybe the next day but in the morning so I don't need a lot of gear with me and especially I don't need to carry a tent this is the backpack that I use it's from f-stop I think it's Shuka the Shuka model and I'm using this one if I'm going on the mountain I'm staying more days uh, or if uh, I need to carry a tent I'm using this one which is a Dirter Air Contact Pro 70 plus 15. This backpack costs half the price of this. This one is a lot better when you're hiking in the mountains. This one is lighter and it has um, better gear storage. So it's difficult to choose from between one of them and that's why I have both. And now you need to walk in the mountains. <laughs> So, uh, first of all, you need a mindset that will allow you to walk by yourself. It could be dangerous, so um, from in, in the beginning maybe you just start walk with a friend. And in time you develop the trust and experience to walk by yourself. Now, let's talk about the gear that you need as a hiker, uh, landscape photographer. So, let's start with the boots. I have two pairs of boots. This is a three season, spring, uh, uh, summer and autumn. These are from La Sportiva. Unfortunately, I bought them uh, too tight for my legs, so I have to, to, to sell these. I only wear these to two of my workshops and uh, unfortunately I have to sell these. And for winter I have these boots from Salomon. Um, which can go to up to minus 25 degrees Celsius. The comfort zone it's at around minus 10 uh, degrees. So you need good insulated uh, boots for winter. Now let's go to the other clothings that you need. The underwear has to be from uh, Merino wool. I think it's the best quality. I got these from Zajo. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, in terms of socks, you need uh, socks uh, designed for uh, the temperature that you're hiking in. This means socks for winter or socks for uh, summer. 
gloves I have even in summer so these these gloves are always with me so I'm having a pair of thick gloves uh, and uh, when you buy thick gloves you just need a lot of extra room inside your glove the gloves, the gloves uh, don't have to be tight on your hand and then I have some thin gloves with fingers some uh, thicker gloves without fingers and if I'm hiking with a tent I also have some Home Depot gloves for working with wood and all other uh, abrasive materials I have two of these I don't know what they're called in English in Romanian I would say I would call them bandana it sounds so Spanish <laughs> hand me the bandana and then I have two hats because you get sweaty and you don't want to stay in one place with a sweaty hat t-shirts uh, never wear cotton I have uh, t-shirts specially made for uh, mountain hiking I wear I have with me at least two t-shirts if it's just one day I have only two t-shirts if it's more than one day then I have three uh, t-shirts summer pants which are these one from uh, Revolution Race autumn pants are these one which also are insulated from North Finder and also um, water resistant and winter pants water resistant insulated really warm <laughs> I have this down jacket uh, from Patagonia really expensive really hard to maintain and uh, really sensitive jacket you can't wear this with uh, a backpack on your back because the down will compress and will, this will not uh, be uh, warm at its highest parameters so this is this is not a jacket that I really enjoy wearing and that's why I move towards uh, synthetic insulation uh, because I think it's a lot easier to maintain it can rain on it it can uh, take a lot of damage and it still maintains its properties and then I also have a winter jacket which has a bigger insulation uh, wind resistant water resistant and so on uh, these days I think all the brands have access to good materials uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money to buy uh, bigger brands just because it's a bigger brand I think what you need to pay uh, close attention is to execution to check all the uh, small details on the clothings and as I said I think all the brands have access to good materials these days uh, now if you have questions uh, about everything about anything uh, around here just use the comment section below share this video maybe other photographers are interested in knowing what exactly is the gear that you need as a landscape photographer and uh, if you're not subscribed maybe consider subscribing <laughs> and then until next time keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better bye bye